what's going on guys all right so I figure we're gonna have a little bit of a change of pace I'm gonna do a different kind of video this is a video that has been requested of me um, on numerous occasions so I figure you know what it is time that I do one of these videos and that is simply a how-to video when it comes to leather working now the sheath that we are going to be making today is for a um, a custom uh, knife. It is for my uh, STKR Scout. That knife right there. Now this model of sheath can be made for multiple knives. I have made this made this sheath for uh, BK2s. Um, I make it, you know, for the uh, PLS K1 or PLS K2. It can be made for virtually any type of knife. And the sheath that I am talking about is this style this style of sheath just like this and um, now you'll have to forgive me this sheath I have started it is finished all except for the retention snap right here um, this is my personal scout and the client that ordered this sheath the knife is like I said a custom knife so I want to make sure that the handle radius is exactly the same so I'm going to hold off and do the snap once the new knife or the uh, the client's knife actually arrives to me so it's going to stay unfinished like that until I get it but anyway this is the style of sheath that I'm going to uh, walk every th everybody through and teach you how to make um, so if you are interested in that Please stay with me and uh, we'll go from there okay so now you can make like I said you can make this style of sheath for multiple different knives this is one that I have made for my PLS K1 and you know I, I really really enjoy these styles the reason I enjoy this style so much is the simple fact that it is a five carry option you can carry it low on your hip with the dangler um, I make them in such a way that the dangler comes off um, and you can carry it high on the hip you can carry it scout with the scout straps you can carry it cross draw if you want or if you get creative you can actually rig up a shoulder harness system and wear it that way as well um, as you see in this one you can actually incorporate a fire steel loop if you want um, or if you choose not to like I have with this particular one you don't have to add that in there as well okay now before we get started the first things we're going to need is a pen a piece of paper a ruler and the knife that you are going to be making the sheath for we are going to design our our, our template and um, that way we can lay that template on our piece of leather cut it out and that's going to be the beginning of our sheath okay so the first thing that I want to establish when making my pattern is I actually am going to figure out I'm going to make up the place for my strap first so the first thing I need to do is I need to determine the width that I want my strap. In the case of this sheath, is the width that I that I chose was uh, three quarters of an inch, so that's exactly what I'm going to start with. And as how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my flat edge ruler and I'm going to make a mark three quarters on both sides just like so and mark it out now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the the half point of the width of my piece of paper and you'd think I'd know this off the top of my head, but I don't. It is, let's see, 
eight and a half. So we're looking at what four and a quarter. So we're going to go in four and a quarter here. Four and a quarter here. Draw our line across. Okay, now we're going to pretend that this piece right here is going to be our retention strap. And all we're going to do is we're going to lay our knife on here. And like I said, pretend that this piece here is going to wrap over your handle. That is going to tell us whereabouts we want to line this knife up. Um, when you, this is the part that's going to be kind of hard to describe. You want this retention strap to sit right at the lowest point. Okay, you can see curves in here. Okay, you don't want the retention strap to start here. You don't want it to start here. You want it to start right there at the deepest point. So now is what we're going to do is we're going to lay our knife on its back spine just like this and on the center line and we are going to rotate it over and then we're going to look and see like I said that our retention strap is at that deepest point now all I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my knife steady I'm going to start at the point of the knife and trace the outline. So now I'm left with something like that. Now the next thing that I am going to do is I am going to extend it out that way I can put a double stitch in as well as make room for one of those Chicago screw posts as well. And the distance that I have used or found that is good for this particular sheath is about three quarters of an inch. So, not going to get fancy. I'm just simply going to take my, my flat edge Mark three quarters of an inch, move it over, three quarters, three quarters, and basically. So what I've got here is I've got little dots, three quarters of an inch from my blade. Now you can see that this section here from the tip of the knife to the center line is um, obviously I'm not going to, since my knife's point did not go up to that point, you know, I'm going to have to fill in the blanks on that so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to imagine that my blade continued to run up there and I'm just going to simply bring that up just like that and then I'm going to continue on putting my dots at three quarters of an inch Now once I've got that complete, I'm just going to connect the dots.
just like that. Okay, so now that we've connected our dots, now we are going to figure out this section here. Okay, so if I put the sheath there, you can kind of see what I'm doing now. Now again, I'm just going to kind of freehand this section here. I'm going to bring that up just like that. Just like so. Okay, so the next step is uh, pretty simple. We're just going to take a sharp knife and we're simply going to cut around this outline right quick. So I know I want my strap intact, so I'm going to cut that there. I have found that if you try to do this with scissors, once you're done with your uh, pattern or your template, it just will not lay flat on your piece of leather. So I have found that by using a straight blade like this, it will just lay nice and flat for you. Take our ruler, sit on that center line just like this. Gently lift this up and with the big tip of your finger, run it back and forth along the spine of your ruler. And that will lay that over right on that center line. And you can fold that over just like that. Now the purpose of doing that is now I'm going to come back with my pen and I'm going to follow the outside edge of my initial cut just like that. So now when I fold it over you can see it's starting to form a nice, nice template. Okay, so now, what is it that we're going to do with this section here? You can see this line right here from our original outline of the knife. Now when we fold this over, you can actually see through the paper that blue line. So all I'm going to do is I am going to trace right over the outside of this that line and then I'm going to continue around this outside so that now I have that like I said trace on the outside that line 
and then continue the outside. Then you have this here. Okay, now we're going to flip this whole thing over and again you can actually see the outline through the paper. So I am going to come that turn it over will now show up on this side so now I can just come through trace it out and there you have it now I have found that when you lay your knife on here and bring this over this section here when you add in the thickness of the leather will not be wide enough so what I am going to do is I am going to add just a little bit to this section and I think I'm going to actually add about a quarter of an inch so again I'm going to come through here mark out my quarter of an inch just like that and I'm just simply going to freehand it just like that Now, I am going to make my marks for my belt strap. And that's how I'm going to do that is on my center line. I'm going to find my center line again. And I am going to make a mark about an eighth of an inch to the left of my center line and then I want my belt strap to be the same width as my retention strap this is personal preference if you want to make it wider then by all means make it wider but I kinda of prefer to have everything uniformed if my retention strap is three quarters of an inch I like my scout scout or my excuse me my scout straps to be three quarters of an inch and I also want my dangler to be three quarters of an inch and you can see that when it comes to like my larger knives my, my straps are actually a full inch but like I said that is personal preference if you want to make it wider then by all means make it wider so I've made the first mark for my retention strap or excuse me my belt strap right there so now I'm going to measure over three quarters of an inch and make another mark. Okay, now I'm going to flip this paper over to the back side and put those marks on the back side too. If you cannot see the mark through your paper, slide a piece of white paper underneath it and then your marks will actually show up pretty well. And now we're simply going to cut this pattern out. This is just a beginning template. We're actually going to finish this template nice and neat here in just a second.
Okay, so now that we have our rough template done, we're going to go ahead and make a finished final template, uh, something that's going to be a little nicer. Um, you're probably going to hear a little bit of background noise. Uh, my wife got home, so my kid is going crazy. They are uh, in the kitchen cooking dinner, which is a plus. So, so what I've done is uh, I've got a, another piece of paper. Again, I made a center line. Now is what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my original template on to my second one and I'm going to line up the center lines just like this. And then I'm going to make an outline of my original onto this one. Okay, so now we're left with an outline of what's going to be our master template. Now the center line is actually going to serve a purpose at this point. It is actually going to help us determine uh, where our belt strap is going to sit. Now if you remember, in the rough copy I slid over from the center line and made a mark. I made that mark an eighth of an inch when I drew this out you can see that that eighth of an inch is or has been left in so I'm going to come up to the top of my center line up here and I'm going to make a eighth of an inch mark over And then from that eighth of an inch, I am going to mark at my three-quarter mark. And then I'm going to make my first mark for my belt strap. And there. Now I'm going to flip it over to the back side, make my center line. You can actually see through the paper your center line. So just put your ruler back on it and make your mark. Okay, now we have our center line on the back, we have our template on the front. So now we're just going to cut it out. Now there is a reason that I leave the center line in my template on both sides, the front and the back. And you will see exactly why I do that in a future step. Okay, and this is our final template. Now, I always make a note on my templates. On this one you can see that I wrote inside right hand. I'm simply just letting my, myself know that when I lay this template on the leather that this will be the inside of the sheath and if I lay it on the leather just like it is it will be for a right-handed person. A lot of times you can do the exact same thing on the opposite side just so there's no confusion. Obviously you can make whatever notes that you want, but let me tell you, there is nothing more frustrating than making a template, and laying it on your leather, cutting that template out using all that leather only to find out that you messed up and cut that template out for a left-handed sheath when you intended it for a right-handed sheath or vice versa. This is most certainly not a cheap hobby and leather is quite expensive so when you make those those mental mistakes you will be very mad at yourself so please make those notes on your templates that way you can avoid 
these types of screw-ups. Learn from my mistakes. Alright, so obviously the next stage is to actually lay our template on our piece of leather, trace it, and cut it. Now, like I said before, it is very important that you put notes on your template. In this case, the client that I am making these sheaths for, the next two sheaths that I make are for left-handed individuals. So the template that I have made is actually for a right-handed person. So in order to make this for a left-handed individual, I am simply going to do nothing more than turn that template over. Now when I trace it, cut it out, I fold my leather to the, uh, the flesh side, to the inside of the sheath, it is going to come out as a left-handed carry. Now, before I actually lay my template on there and um, mark it, I want to point out a couple things that you want to watch for when laying your leather on, or excuse me, your template on a piece of leather. Number one, you need to look on the surface for any deformities, any real major scars or anything like that that's on the hide. Um, scars are not necessarily a bad thing, they kind of give character, but on this particular piece, if I zoom in, let this thing focus for a second, if it's going to focus, this scar right here if I was to fold it it would start to crack so I am going to avoid that particular scar the other thing that I want is I want to look at the back side or the flesh side of my leather and make sure that it is nice and smooth as well and if I flip this piece over you can actually see that the flesh side has some rough spots on it that is not going to affect the uh, the durability of your sheath this is more of a I'm making this sheath for an individual so it means a lot to me to know that this individual is getting as high quality leather sheath as I can produce. So I am in good conscience going to avoid that particular area. If I have to waste a little bit of leather to ensure that I give somebody you know the best sheath that I can, well that's just something I'm gonna have to live with. So is what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lay my template on there and I'm going to kind of flip it back and forth and see that where I lay my template is going to avoid that rough spot. So I can see if I lay my template on there in this fashion here all this area here is going to be wasted but at least now I know that my client is going to get a good quality sheath so now I'm simply going to do no, nothing more than trace the outside of my template alright so I have my patterns now on my leather so I'm simply just going to cut these bad boys out now um, if I suspect that I am going to make more of these sheaths in the future, I will actually keep this master template here. And I will actually do exactly what I did to this leather, but I'll do it on a small or a, a thin piece of plastic or a thin piece of wood or something like that. And I will actually cut it out with a jigsaw and keep it, you know, so that way. I don't have to go through the process of designing and making a template for every sheath. That will just save you a lot of time if you can just simply lay a template out, trace around it, and go from there. 
I also have gloves on. Now, I do this because my hands um, get quite grubby at work. Um, doesn't matter how much gojo I put on them. Um, I just can't seem to always get the dirt out. So I don't want to transfer that dirt to my leather. So I will all the time, or you know, most of the time, have some sort of gloves on, whether it be latex gloves or um, you know, gloves like this. But like I said, I just don't want to transfer that dirt to my leather. Another thing is you want to try to keep your fingernails short when working with leather, especially when you're doing wet forming or um, you know putting tooling marks or anything like that in your leather because if you take your fingernail and gouge it in your leather, that mark is going to stay indefinitely. You're not going to get it out. So let's go ahead and cut these out right quick and we will move on all right now I said it before in videos make sure you have a good sharp blade don't go cheap don't dull your blades down and continuously try to use them change them out make sure they're sharp Okay, so we've got the patterns cut out. Next thing we're going to do is, while we've got our leather and everything, we might as well go ahead and finish cutting out all the other pieces that we're going to need. So, with that, we also need to cut out our scout straps, as well as the strap for our dangler. So I didn't want to bore you with cutting those out so I went ahead and off camera cut out four scout straps as well as two dangler straps now I already knew the length of this these straps obviously all I had to do was take you know a piece of string or something and wrap it around and then pull it off and actually measure it. Um, if you don't know that length, then you can always measure from this point to this point, and then you know, add an inch. Um, 
two inches, you know, something like that. Give yourself some breathing room. I learned a long time ago that it's better to cut something long and trim it because once it's cut, it's cut. And, you know, if you cut this leather too small, too short, you start over. There is no adding on. So cut it a little bit long, take a little bit of scrap off at the end. Trust me, it's well worth the headache. Now, the dangler itself, just through past experience and trial and error, I've found that 10 and a half inches long is actually a good length for the dangler itself. So let's move on to the next process. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up these danglers right quick, minus the die. Um, all I'm going to use for this is my um, a stitch groover, uh, edge beveler. You're going to need a, your ring at this point, pin, some sort of cutting tool, and a hole punch. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my stitch groover here, and I'm just going to put some lines in this thing. This isn't for anything but looks. All this is going to do is put them nice little groove lines in there and it just gives it some um, attractive flair I guess you said you could say. Um, all I'll do is I'll take my uh, stitch groover, uh, loosen it up and to adjust it I will stick a piece of leather in between in between it right here and here and tighten it down. We're simply just gonna rest it and pull it down. Put a nice even groove in it. And of course while I have it out, I'm going to go ahead and do my scalp straps as well. Might as well do them while I'm, while I'm at it. Okay, so now that we've got it all grooved out, the next thing I'm going to do is trim the corners off a little bit. Um, at this point, you can round it off if you want. Um, I don't really care for the round look as much. I just like taking the corners off. That way, whenever you burnish it out, it's not perfectly round, but it's not perfectly square neither. But, you know, that's all personal preference. Alright, so I got a little carried away, got to talking to the camera, and actually forgot a step, which it's no big deal. I can go back and put that groove in just a little bit better once I'm done doing this. But as what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go and do those little subtle tooling marks that you see in the straps and the dangler at this point. 
And the reason I want to do that before I go put my grooves and stuff in there is because it's basically, basically going to distort my grooves once I do this. But like I said, I can go back and touch them up with the uh, stitch groover again. It's not really that big of a deal. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wet my leather here. I'm just going to use a cotton ball for this. Now, as you're doing this, you'll be able to watch the water just get absorbed into the leather very quickly. Once that water stops absorbing really, really quick is a good indication that you can start tooling pretty, pretty well. All right, so this is going to be a, a little bit of a, a tip or trick that I've never seen anybody else do is what I'm going to personally use to tool those sporadic tool marks is nothing more than a rock. And all I'm going to do is start putting sporadic marks in my leather. No set pattern. Just pushing down decently hard with my rock. thing that I like the most about doing these subtle little tooling marks with a rock is the fact you're never going to get the exact same tooling pattern ever again. Mother Nature is a fingerprint and every rock is unique. So I thought that was going to be a rather fun little tip or trick to share with you guys that like I said I've never seen anybody else do. Now, since I have those groove marks in there, like I said, when I was pressing on my leather, it's going to distort them just a little bit. So, like I said earlier, it's not a big deal. All I got to do is go back in and go over them again. And that'll clean them up. Okay, so after that's all done, I'm just simply going to take my edge beveler now, and that's all I'm going to do is I'm just going to bevel my edges. I'm going to do the front side and I'm also going to flip it over and I'm going to do the back side as well. Now by beveling your edges is what you're going to be accomplishing is when you burnish it it's going to give it a nice finished round smooth look.
All right, so let's go ahead and mark our holes now for our Chicago screws so that way we can attach our ring. Now, all I'm going to do is for this first hole, I'm just going to take my end here and I'm going to guesstimate that that's roughly about three quarters of an inch from the edge back. So I'm just going to come in here roughly about three quarters of an inch, center my hole up. punch it out. Now you can see that this thing has doubled over itself a couple different times. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just follow that loop exactly. So I'm just going to hold it, bring it back over onto itself just like this and again I am going to roughly want my hole three quarters of an inch back and as all I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it flush with my hand and make a mark with my pin there's where my next hole needs to be. <clears throat> now when we bring this over, we want to go ahead and put our ring inside. Center our hole up. kind of adjust it just like that again hold it in place go through with our pin get a mark now we can see where we want that hole at got our three three holes so that when we put our Chicago screw in you can see we'll have a nice dangler you may have noticed that this is still a little damp from the tooling it's perfectly okay it's not gonna hurt a thing So now let's go ahead and let's put in these little groove marks here. Again, it's not to serve any purpose, but eye candy basically. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to again take my stitch groover. simply gonna go along the edge. Now when you get this little string here, instead of just ripping that thing off, I like to come through with my blade gently cut it off. I don't like ripping it.
know a lot of people will actually go through and actually put their stitch their stitch line around the, the outer parameter at this point but I don't do that because I'm going to trim the edges and sand them off and everything else so I, I like to go and I like to do that at the very end but now that I've done that the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to again take my edge beveler and touch up any area that I'm not going to address at a later date now I am going to end up putting a welt in this area here so I want to avoid beveling this inside otherwise it is going to not sit together there's going to be there's going to be a gap right there so I do not want to put a bevel on this side I can go through and I can put a bevel on the outside but I definitely don't want to do it on the inside at this point And again, I'm going to go and I'm going to bevel the back pieces again. I'm going to avoid this spot right here because I'm going to put that welt in there. Okay. And like before, I got to talking about, or I got to talking to the camera, and I actually forgot something that I usually do before beveling and that's simply going in with these corners and I'll actually punch them out just a little bit and it'll, it'll keep that um, keep that from ripping right there and it also makes this uh, putting this beveling off them edges just a little bit easier okay now when I have this over on the back side you can see that center line just like we left in the paper template I transferred that center line because it's what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this right here which is a V gouge and I'm going to actually take a strip out of that center part that way when I lay the leather over itself it's actually going to fold a lot nicer and a lot crisper at that point and these things are adjustable and basically is what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to adjust it to where it's roughly half the width of whatever level leather it is that you are uh, putting a gouge in Alright, 
So something that I've done while I was off the camera is I've actually taken a standard size belt and a standard size belt is basically a inch and a half wide and I've taken it and I've laid it flat across this top section here where the retention strap is and all I've done is I folded over the belt strap just to make sure that it is long enough and actually it was about an inch too long so I just trimmed a little bit off I basically all I want is I want to know that a standard size belt will run in there nice and easy not too tight not too loose and after I did that I went ahead and I marked out some holes here using something like this just equally spaced just punched them out with a leather punch like that or you can actually just use that and take a, a wooden mallet or a hammer and just hammer it right through the leather both work so now is what I gotta do is I gotta figure out where I'm going to put the holes down here so again I am going to take my belt lay it on there bring my strap over and while holding my strap in place I am just going to take an awl and I am going to come through the existing holes and just simply mark them just like that so I bring that up you can see I have some marks right there in my leather and that is where I'm going to put them holes now you can take your awl punch through your leather if you want Take a mallet, mallet them in. Um, you're not going to really be able to reach with one of these, so I suggest either using your awl or this. But I'm going to turn the camera off for this process because it's late, my daughter's sleeping, and I don't want her yelling at me for waking her up by hammering through my leather. Now once those holes are done, I'm going to go back and instead of using this type of stitch groover, I am actually going to use a freehand. And I'm going to turn this over and I'm actually going to take this little freehand and I'm going to connect the dots. Now is what this is going to do is when I sew this it's going to prevent the knife from rubbing on the stitches on the inside. So basically when I stitch it the stitch is actually going to sit inside of that groove rather than on the outside of the leather so now when I run my knife back and forth it's not going to rub on that stitch and pop it loose alright that's it for that part next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and soak this thing in water now you can either soak it in a bowl of water or you can run it under running water doesn't really matter I typically just run it under water for about about a minute or so doesn't have to be anything super hot but you don't want it cold you want it pretty warm um, just warm enough to where you can tolerate it um, definitely don't want it so hot that you can't tolerate it alright now before I move on to this I want to point out a couple things first you can see underneath here I've got a basically I'm just doing this on a glass cutting board um, it's not necessary but I just like to do it um, I make sure I clean this off real well 
before I do this because once you wet that leather it's going to take dirt and, and grime a lot easier than it would when it's dry and leather takes that kind of stuff very easy anyway so make sure if you do do it on glass or anything just you know make sure that it's nice and clean um, another thing is if I intended on leaving you know my knife in the sheath as um, as I was letting my leather dry I would want to make sure and protect my blade um, but for this particular sheath, I am not going to actually leave it in there while it dries. I just want a nice, subtle shape to it. And the leather will maintain that shape just fine without the knife actually being in here. Um, if you guys have any questions on how to protect your knife, just contact me and I'll let you know or I'll make a short video on that. Um, I'm sure I'll also be doing a lot of other videos in the meantime or in the future on exactly how to do that as well. Another thing is earlier I had mentioned to keep your fingernails short when you start messing with your water forming. You can really gouge your leather with your fingernails if they're long. and I also like to use latex gloves. Um, I'm running low on latex gloves, so they are going to be mismatched. So, all you fashion gurus out there, don't make fun of me. All right, got it all wetted down. So all we're going to do is, after I've kind of folded it over in half, got a basic shape to it. Now I'm just going to take and put my knife in it. And I'm going to make sure that my knife is sitting where I want it to sit. Because once you uh, make a good sh shape with leather, I mean leather maintains its form really, really well. So we're going to make sure that it's where I want it. And that's about, that's about how I like it. So now all I'm going to do is just start working my fingers around the contour of the nice blade and handle squeezing as I go working it back and forth And you're going to do this for a while. Not as long as you think. Okay, so I've sat here and I've worked this sheath for about 10 minutes now. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. And you can see that leather has made a very distinct shape. I'm not going to get fancy. I'm going to sit it on a dinner plate and I'm going to put it in the oven at about 125 degrees and that's not hot enough to bake my leather but uh, it will definitely help speed up the drying process